Amen. All right, sorry for the long chapter there, Psalm 78. I was trying to come up with a sermon out of Psalm 119 just to test Parker, so I ended up with this one. No, just kidding. Good job. Thank you, Parker. Greetings from the land of Florida, where it's always sunny and the grass is always green. Now, it's good to be back in Texas. Of course, things are bigger in Texas. I said, can I get a little water? And this is what they gave me, so yeehaw. It's good to be back in Texas. We're in Psalm 78. Let's start there in verse number 4, back at the beginning. Psalm 78, verse number 4. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. The title of my sermon today is The Generation to Come. And we're going to talk about the generation of soul winners that are to come after us. We're going to talk about this godly seed, this godly inheritance that the Lord is going to do through us. And, you know, we need to build up this next generation right. to come. Amen. We need to work. We need to build these people up. We need to raise godly children. Hey, we need to build the waste cities. There are a lot of cities where it cannot be said, well, they, there's a man of God in that city. Well, they're preaching the word in that city. I had a guy call me earlier this week while I was flying here, and he left a voicemail, and, and he visited the church once. And he said, I'm moving there. He said, in my city... It's either they have the right Bible or they have the right gospel. And I can't find both. Now that's sad. Look, there is a famine of the word today. And I believe God wants us to raise up a generation to come. And you know, hey, Florida needs some help. Yeah. Hey, Oklahoma City needs some help. Right? Texas isn't done. God, God wants us to help Texas. And you know, what other churches? What other churches need help? What other, what other uh, states rather? Somebody tell me a state where you know for a fact there's no church. Colorado. Colorado needs a new IFB church. Where else? Arkansas. Arkansas. Michigan. There are places all over the country, yea, all over the world, that need a man of God. They need a church where they're sending out soul winners to preserve the generation to come. And look, we need to keep our hand on the plow. We need to not lose focus of what's going on. We need to accept the responsibility we've been given. And look, not all of us are the same type of member in the body. God has set us together, and maybe, maybe, well, I'm definitely not a mouthpiece. That's okay. Be faithful where you're at. Yeah. Maybe you're that foot. Maybe you're the footing. Maybe you're the foundation here, and, you know, you need to be strong. There are many states that need help. There are many states that, hey, need new IFB. Amen. And Pastor, Pastor Romero has a vision for church planting and for soul winning. And I am his fellow laborer. I believe in this vision to reach the states. I want to see the gospel go all the way around the world. Amen. Are you in it with us? Yes, do you want to take part in this mission? Do you want to help? Because there's things you can do from here. And you say, well, you know, the monotony of the day in and the day out. And I go soul winning every week, and it's just soul winning now. It's gotten a little boring. But look, this is the foundation of preaching the gospel. This is what other cities and other states do not have. And we cannot neglect it. We cannot forget it. You know, in Psalm 68, the Bible says, The Lord gave the word... The great was the company of those that published it. Great was the company of those that published it. And, and by the, when it says published, it means preaching. When it says company, it doesn't mean corporation, it means congregation. Right? Great was the congregation that was preaching the gospel all the way around the world. Great is the congregation here at Steadfast that is being steadfast in their soul winning. That are sending preachers all over America right now. Look, as things change and you see, you see Pastor Romero having to fill, fill a void and send men and, and take care of business in other states, you guys need to get his back. You need to support him in this and you need to get strong here. You need to be vigilant here. I mean, you moved to a new IFB church. You were just a hearer only, right? Now you're here. Is that the end game? Is it over? You ready to retire? Start, start getting some dust and some cobwebs on you, right? Did you think that that was it? Did you think that's all that God has for you? Well, now I'm here. Maybe I can raise a godly family. Maybe my, my kids won't grow up and be drunkards like the rest of my family. Hey, praise the Lord if your kids don't grow up to be drunkards. That's right. Hey, maybe, maybe your children can grow up and be mighty men and, and women of God and be soul winners. Hey, praise the Lord for that. But what about that second mile? What about that other city? What about the other places around the world where they need people to preach the gospel? They need churches to be a stronghold to fight against what the devil is doing. Look, they have TV stations in every, every city. 
They have false religions in every city, but they don't have new IFB churches. And this burden, this responsibility is on us. Maybe you have those goals. That's good. Those are good goals. What else? What else do you think God can use you for? I have a, well, there's a man in our church back in, in uh, Jacksonville, and he doesn't see himself ever becoming a preacher, but he says, but my oldest boy will. He says, oh, he's got a, he's got a desire for it. I believe he yeah, has talents on his life. He can preach. He loves the Lord. He, he preaches the gospel to his little brothers. and I mean, he's on fire. Hey, we need a generation to come that's like that. Amen. And you know, as much as Mama would love to keep him nearby for the rest of her life and we'd all be you know i'm sure she would also love to see him go to another city start another church start a fire over there and let god work some miracles let some people hear the gospel i mean you think about it, do you think that the christian life is just defensive well good thing i got that shield i can kind of dodge some darts do you think we're just on the defensive boy it's such a bad world it's getting weird out there brother have you seen the news lately it's getting pretty weird isn't it as long as I can huddle in here and hide behind the end of, you know, I'm huddling with the saints. I'm in the camp of the saints. We're good to go now. This is offensive. We're supposed to go on the attack. The devil will not prevail over us. The gospel will succeed wherever we take it. Wherever God sees fit to open a door, if you're willing to step your foot through there, he will provide. It will succeed. And maybe you say, well, I want to take part in that. I want to be part in something like that. Well, hey, it starts by being faithful here. It starts by being by, by by protecting your church here, helping the brother. You know, you're not in retirement mode. If you're in retirement mode, get out of retirement. Yeah. Wake up. Be a soul winner. Support other ministries. Talk to people. Find out where there's a need. I believe God's doing a revival across the country today, and I believe it's new IFB. I believe He's chosen this group that we hey we, soul winning comes first. That's our number one goal. Well, you know. It's nice. It's we got a comfy life. We got a good job. Those things don't matter. That's the carrot the devil wants to put in front of your nose to lull you to sleep so you never do anything more. Look, God can use you. No, oh, brother fan, I'm already disqualified. I could never be a pastor. Doesn't matter. God can use you. God needs people with a zeal, with a desire to obey his word, with a desire to teach every commandment, the easy ones and the hard ones, the little ones and the big ones. And look, we are on the offensive. We are on the attack. Pastor Anderson sent Pastor Romero to conquer Fort Worth. Not just to put a little flag in the sand and say we're here. Look, we're a little pin on the map. We're a little dot. There's something. No, he's here to conquer this city. He's going to start on this side, and he's going to go to the other side, and he's going to preach the gospel at every door, and guess what? And then do it again. And keep doing it, and keep doing it. Pastor Anderson did not send Pastor Romero just to have a nice cushy church full of a bunch of happy people. Let's get in retirement mode. Hey, thank God Pastor Romero is not in retirement mode. Thank God he's got some fight. Listen, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. The gates of hell will not prevail against God's church. And God's goal was that churches reproduce. Amen. You in the flesh reproduce and have children, right? In the spirit, you reproduce yourself when you preach the gospel from faith to faith, right? You get others saved by preaching them, by showing them the power of the gospel. And guess what? God wants you to reproduce churches also. Look, it's amazing. I've seen some amazing things happen in Jacksonville. And I want you to think about something, right? Here's Steadfast Baptist Church. That's a piece of fruit. Now, if this is good fruit, it should be able to reproduce itself, right? Correct. If it's not genetically modified, this should be able to produce. And guess what? God said, okay, there's Jacksonville, right? We've had almost 1,000 people saved this year in Jacksonville. 1,000 people just this year. Not to counting the part of last year. Think about it. 1,000 souls now that their name is written in the book of life. God, had, hey, it's done. There's nothing they can do to lose it. We've given that free gift out, and we're going to continue. We're going to continue to increase. The Lord is blessing us over there. But you know what? God's doing something else. There's Oklahoma City. There's Oklahoma City. Now look, these are three churches, right? But this is one ministry. These are three congregations, but this is one tree. <laughs> Steadfast is just getting started. Yeah. Look, this is fruit that came from Faithful Word. And thank God for Pastor Anderson and Faithful Word, but that's not where we hang our hat. Steadfast Baptist Church has a mission. We have a vision for global evangelism, for preaching the gospel everywhere we can, for reproducing ourselves, for starting churches. And if God opens another door, 
Are you ready? Would you do it? What if Pastor, hey, what, what, if, what if God, hey, my, tomorrow we need somebody to go. Well, I'm not quite, well, can you preach? Do you know your Bible? Well, ten years from now, we're going to need five more. Are you raising your sons? Don't you want your sons to be raised up and ready to go? Don't you want your daughters prepared to support a man of God and carry this ministry forward? This new generation will raise up. God is doing it, and He wants you to be part. You are here as an opportunity, not just to get comfy. Yeah. Not just to say, well, I'm, I'm comfortable now. i got everything figured out. God wants you to fight. God wants you to preach the gospel. You're part of this battle. Look down at the chapter here. I want you to see this. Look, we got to get ready to conquer new cities. Look at verse number 5 here. Verse number 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their generation. What's he saying? Hey, you need to teach your children and teach your children that it's their responsibility to teach their very own children. Multiple generations here. And that's the fruit we're looking at today, right? From church to church to church, from Christian to Christian. And you need to begin by, by not just reproducing yourself self spiritually, but you need to have some goals for discipleship. You need to have some goals for finding ways to help in the local church that to fit the needs of the local church as it has growing pains. I mean, when I left here, there was a lot more walls back there than there are now. <laughs> Every time I show up, you guys are knocking another wall down. Look, there's only a couple units left. You guys are going to knock the outer wall down. You guys are growing. God has blessed Steadfast Baptist Church. And Pastor Romero sees fit not to just retire. Well, we got it all figured out. I got a nice lush job now. I got a bunch of people to help and teach here. God says, no, you know what? You've been faithful in that little bit I've given you. I'm going to give you another city. Oh, yay, I'll give you another city. Look, I believe God's not done with Steadfast. I believe that there are more cities to come. Yeah. I believe God is going to open up doors. And he looks down and he says, well, find me a church that's already doing it. Find me a church that's already putting in the work. Find me a church that has a congregation that's supporting their pastor, that's going out preaching the gospel. And that's the church I'll use. And I believe that's why God is using Steadfast Baptist Church. What is generation? It's fruit. What is a generation? It's to regenerate, to recreate. Look at verse number 8. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Look, we are steadfast. What's the opposite of steadfast? Rebellious. Not keeping your hand on the plow. Not staying in church. Not raising your children the right way. Being lackadaisical in your Christian life. Just being lazy. Finding a comfort zone and staying there. Look, we are steadfast. We are not rebellious. Those words are opposites. They should not meet. You should not be rebellious about God's will in your life. If you see God opening a door for you, man, you better take it. Yeah. You better take it. Look at verse 37 in this chapter. Psalm 78, verse 37. For their heart was not right with Him, neither were they steadfast in His covenant. Look, the old IFB, they have a sour heart. They've got a rotten... I mean, it, just everything's messed up with the old IFB. Yeah. They've given up on soul winning. God is using us to preach His Word. And it's humbling. Look, don't puff yourself up about it. Don't pat yourself on the back. Look, God is using us because we're willing to sacrifice our time and go help strangers. That's true love. Yeah. Oh, well, you're a bunch of hate group over there. Yeah, how many hours and how many people on a weekly basis on the Steadfast Baptist churches in America are how many hours are put in soul winning? Yeah, right. Oh, what a bunch of hateful people. Yeah, real hateful. Yeah. We go out and we preach the gospel, even in the cold. Boy, I miss Florida. <laughs> 29 degrees here when I woke up the other day. What in the world? My wife texts me. It's 70. It's 90 degrees here. She said, what? Man. Thank God for Texas. Thank God for steadfast. Look, the Bible says God is the judge. He putteth down one, right? And he setteth up another. We've humbled ourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he has lifted us up. God is using this church, and you guys just need to purpose in your heart that you've got your pastor's back, that this is a ministry you can get behind. 
that this is something what what if that means you just you know you were planning something else but you just have to fill in and clean the church would you do it what if that means you 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 have to start taking that extra time or you watch some tv throw that tv out or you watch, instead of watching tv go soul winning get on fire for god you guys got to share this zeal with each other you know deuteronomy 6 where he says thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children look we have spiritual children we have spiritual children when we reproduce ourselves and we need to help them. Look, do you want to be used of God? Do you want it to be said by the end of your life that you finished your course? Or do you want to be like 99% of Americans sitting there saying, I sure wish I spent more time with my children. I wish I spent more time in the Bible. I wish I obeyed that calling that God gave. I wish I had just done something more instead of wasting my life away. Look, people have been infected by TV. It's made Americans very lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Look, America should be judged by God for the wickedness that goes on. Amen. For the open pedophilia by the sodomites, yeah. for the abortion, yeah. for the warmongering, for the usury. Yeah. I could come up with ten other reasons. America should be judged. Yep. I believe the only saving grace America has is how many new IFB churches we can start as fast as we can. Yeah. Amen. How many people we can preach the gospel to that it will change their heart and change their mind and then they'll have the Holy Spirit and then they'll start to be grieved when they just sit around and waste their life. Yeah, sure. Look, we need to wake this world up and it's going to happen one door at a time. On. One person at a time. What happens if we don't move forward? What about the next generation? Look, we need to lead by example. God says that the generation to come is very important. And we have to choose daily, minute by minute, whether we're going to walk in the flesh or walk in the Spirit. It's up to us what fruit we have in our own personal life. And, you know, the devil's got all of us one way or another. Well, there's that one thing. God knows. I mean, I'll get over it one day. Well, God, hey, we're covered under the blood. Hey, do something about it. Amen. Hey, how many dads in here say, well, you know, I'm not, I got that thing, but I'm raising old sonny boy. He's going to get up. He'll do something good. He'll be a preacher. Boy, she'll, my daughter, she'll grow up. She'll act right. She'll know. No, you're being a hypocrite. Lead by example. Lead in the power of the Holy Spirit and learn to forsake the sin that's in your life. Learn to overcome the temptations of the devil. You need to deal with the sin that's revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. Look, that's very important. You can't. A hypocrite cannot produce good fruit. A hypocrite will produce little hypocrites that know how to hide their sin from daddy just like daddy hides his sin from God. Is that what you want? Would you count that as success? Look at verse number 9. You're in this chapter still. Psalm 78, verse number 9. What happens if we don't move forward? What happens if we retreat? The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They walked away from the fight. What if there's a new IFB church? And they say, well, we're good. we got 15 people. We can pay our rent. Everything's covered. We're all happy. We get to fellowship. No sense in having more than one soul winning time a week. No sense in reproducing ourselves. Look, sounds like the old IFB to me. The old IFB is dead because of their priorities. Yeah. they got the wrong priorities, and they're willing to walk away from a fight instead of get in the fight like they're commanded. You know, I ran into one of, those, one of these bread slingers, these Victory Temple guys today. You guys know who I'm talking about? Yep. Victory Temple Ministries ran by this effeminate little sissy, Jojo. He, he gets money from the government to house these boys that have been abused or that, that have been caught up in the law. So he houses them in one big house, house. And it's not far from here. It's like a mile from here. And he has all these Pentecostal churches. And then he makes these boys to earn their keep by go out and sell them bread. Look, the girls, they have to cook the bread to keep their keep. The boys has to go out and sell it. And I run into this guy today. Hey, man. You know, I said, look, Victory Ministries is wicked as hell. That's right. yeah. This guy about fell back. He said, what are you talking about? I said, you guys teach repent of your sins to be saved. That's not even found in the Bible. Yeah, that's right. You cannot earn your way to heaven by your own righteousness. Yeah. Well, but I mean, Jesus, the first thing he said was, uh, you got to, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I said, no, he didn't. You're wrong. And I, then I got even, got a little, little close. I said, hey, let me tell you something. Jojo, and I tried to compel him for a second there. But, and he's like, no, no, you got you to be good. You got to repent of your sins. You got to turn. I said, well, look, Jojo is an effeminate sissy. He's a punk. 
God's judgment is on his life. And he has a plastic basket full of bread. And he starts cussing at me. Drop on all sorts of vulgar language. And he says, I ought to hit you in the face with this bread basket. And I said, go ahead, make your decision. <laughs> Look, he ran from the fight. He doesn't have the spirit of God. I'm not out trying to pick fights with people, but I want that young man to know that he cannot trust in his own ability to repent of his sins to get to heaven. Yes, I tried to preach the gospel, and it got, he got contentious. I talked about JoJo. Then he wanted to hit me in the face. <laughs> Look, we don't need to back down from fights. We need to stand up and proclaim righteousness. Amen. Don't get lazy. Look, you guys stop going out soul winning. There's these bread boys out every day preaching the repent of your sins gospel. Yeah. Preaching all you have to do is turn from all your sin and God might accept you. The fight is real. The fight is spiritual and it's on your doorstep. Look at verse number 10 here. He says, They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law and forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. I want you to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. So we're looking at what happens when you don't fight. What happens when you back up, when you retreat, when you're not actually commanding your household like you ought to. And look, don't walk away from your blessing. Don't walk away from your blessing. This is your chance to make history in heaven. Wouldn't you love it to be said of you, be a ruler over three cities? And that's a big responsibility. Yeah. That's a big burden. You know, I, I thank God that He's counted me worthy to put me in the ministry, but counted me faithful. But, you know, I'm, I'm a co-laborer with, with Pastor Merrill. Ever since I got here to Steadfast, I said, hey, throw me. He's, he's over here juggling. You ever seen those guys and they just keep throwing them, throwing them, and throwing them? Then eventually they got to start coming down, right? I'm like, come on, toss me something. Help, let me help you with that burden. Let me do something. You got so much. And that ought to be your attitude as well. Hey, what can I do? What can I do to help fix some of these problems? What can I do to take some of that load off of you? God, this isn't a one-man show. Pastor Romero could not lead a church without church members. Yeah. Right? And it's funny because I can't tell you how many times I'd be, I'd be preaching something, and I would say something, and then I realized, I learned that from Pastor Romero. I remember he preached a sermon about that a long time ago. It's funny, I mean, because we don't always give credit where credit is due. I mean, I thought I knew the Bible, but the more you sit under preaching, the more you're laying a foundation, line upon line, brick upon brick. You're building that, that spiritual house of your understanding. Amen. You know, and hey, we need to remember these things. This is your chance to make a difference. Who are you taking with you? Are you recruiting for this military, the, I'm sorry, this, this the, the missionary militia? Are you out there trying to get people saved? Hey, you too can be a Christian. You too can go to heaven. You can have all of your sins forgiven. That's what the disciples preached, the remittance of sins. Did you know you could have all of your sins forgiven? Well, what about the ones to come? All of them. He said all. What a beautiful thing. And that's a, that's a big responsibility we've been given. We need to not take it lightly. We need to take it very seriously. We need to prioritize our life. And look, this next generation has already been forsaken by the old IFB. By the prophets of old, they did it the wrong way. They destroyed their own livelihood, their own children, their own friends, their own congregants. The old IFB killed their own seed with leaven. Well, we'll let a little bit of rock and roll in. Oh, brother, so-and-so likes to carry that NASB. I'm not going to rain on his parade. I'll just let him think it's so God, You know, it's not a big deal. Teach! Say what's right! Right. We need to preach every commandment. We need to be zealous about the Word of God. Right. Look, He's given us clear instructions. We know what we ought to do. Right. Why aren't we doing it? Why? I mean, because that they destroyed their own seed. The old IFB, they committed spiritual abortion on themselves. Yeah. And now it's like, well, maybe we'll get a bus. And we'll run a bunch of kids in. That's the only church growth they have. Yeah. Bunch of old gray-headed people funding buses to bring children in that will never be back. Children that get saved every week and get their candy. Mm -hmm. Look, that's wicked. Yeah. That's strange. Yeah. That's not how God built those churches. We're going to look here in 1 Samuel chapter 2. We're going to look at the, uh, the uh, Hophni Reformed Baptist Community Church. Okay, We're going to look at how not to do it, how the old IFB failed. Look at verse number 12. 1 Samuel 2, 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. What does that mean? Belial is the devil. They were sons of the devil. What does that mean? They were reprobates. They were rejected of God. 
They were messed up in the head. The head priest had two sons that were son they were they're worshiping the devil in their heart, and that head priest let them do the service in the temple. Let them lead the children of God. You think about how messed up this is. And there's a lot of people today, well, I'm saved. I just I gotta find a Baptist church. Maybe I'll find King James only. And then he's like, I, I don't understand why I can't my, my spirit is contrary to this pastor's spirit. Why these people are so messed up in their doctrine. I tried to show him, but he wouldn't receive it. I don't know why. Maybe it's Hophni Baptist Church. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't want to receive it. Maybe in his heart, he's already bowed down to Baal. He's worshiping the devil. And he hates righteousness. Because yeah. they're shearing the sheep. And look, it's a tragedy when the next generation, when they go and serve the devil. That's a tragedy when you lose your kids. But you know what? It's an abomination when parents won't rebuke their children. It's an abomination when parents won't train them upright, teach them the commandment of the Lord, make them afraid of God's judgment. That's an abomination in God's eyes. And look, we as spiritual soul winners, we, have, we are going to have fruit one day. We need that fruit to remain. We need to try to disciple them at the door. We need to get them excited about coming to church. And You know, it takes time with some people. It takes time. You're not going to get them right away. Some of them will come. Some will fall away. But we have to try. We have to make an effort. You say, well, maybe, maybe Hophni didn't really know that he was supposed to train his children. Maybe he didn't really know that God would be upset with him for letting these sons of the devil work in the temple. Maybe he, you know, well, he knew the law. He had the law. He gave the law. In Deuteronomy 13, it says that thine hand shall be first upon them. If your very own son goes and worships the devil, you're supposed to be the first one to put your hand on him. Eli failed miserably. Yeah. That generation was lost. Look, at, flip ahead to verse seventeen. Look at the result about uh, uh, what what he did. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for the men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Look, they hated God. They hated His sacrifice. They were committing abomination. They were doing it wrong. They were stealing from people, and it caused everybody else to hate God. It caused everybody else to hate the offering. Yeah. Well, I just, man, I, I don't like churches. How many times have you been out stolen and somebody tells you that? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I've been burned by a church. Yeah, yeah I, man, I feel you. Yeah. I don't like religion. I can understand why, why you say that because you don't know pure religion. Yeah. You don't yeah. know God's religion. You, you've, got, you've got it all mixed up because of the world's religion. All these false religions that are out there. So they stopped doing the sacrifice. Right? The people start suffering. They're, they weren't doing it God's way. And you know they're getting fat and comfortable. And Eli's just letting it happen. Can you imagine? What's going through the mind of a Christian letting his two sons that he knows for a fact are reprobates serve in the church? Well, I got, I got them on the payroll now. That's success. No, it's not. The world's success is different than God's success. He should have put them to death. Look at verse 27 in this chapter. 1 Samuel 2.27 And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto thee unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? All right. So here's a man of God rebuking a man of God. Eli should not have had to have that happen, but it did. Right? I want to know who that man was. I want to meet that guy when I get to heaven. Right? <laughs> and look, Lee, he, Eli is without excuse. The old IFB, they stop soul winning. They do visitation. They'll put tracks. We stopped our soul winning ministry. It just doesn't work. We started a radio program. Okay, that's a fail. They stopped planting churches. You know, true fruit from a good, healthy church. Well, we're going to give 100 missionaries $25 a month. And we'll, we'll reap in that reward and that harvest. We'll get a spiritual blessings. No, you won't. Most of those missionaries aren't even saved. Yeah. Most of them couldn't even preach the gospel to you. Yeah. Right. Most of them don't even, know, don't even know how to get to heaven themselves. Yeah. They just want to go be in foreign missions. Yeah. Hey, what if I said, hey, Pastor Romero is ready to send a missionary tomorrow to Honolulu. Who would raise their hand? <laughs> Who would go? <laughs> well, Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> Y'all like the cold out here so much. <laughs> Look, God's given us these stories as an example. There's spiritual things we can learn. Eli didn't take care of the generation to come, and they ended up affecting the entire congregation. And it, it made it where God judged him, and God ended up killing him. You know, it, it, 
I know of an old IFB family, and they're without excuse. They know the Bible, but they've allowed leaven to come into their family. And now they're reaping it in their children. And this is what's happening here with Eli. Look at verse 29 here. 1 Samuel 2, 29. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of the offerings of Israel, my people. Well, I, I, I just want a good life. I just want it easy. Hey, you need to desire a godly life. A godly life. And I know this old IFB family, man, they're without excuse. They're fourth generation, independent, fundamental, King James. They know the gospel. As far as I can tell, they're saved. But guess what they're producing? Whorish daughters. They celebrate it when their daughters are in rebellion, which means they're not steadfast. Well, she had all that hair. She chopped it off. She used to wear dresses. Now she wears yoga pants. Acting like a heart. Exposing their nakedness online. Living in open fornication, and the parents won't say a word about it. Well, maybe in a few years, once she gets pregnant, maybe they'll get married then. Yeah. You know, they're just waiting for the right opportunity. How about do it God's way? Yeah. Look, these old IFB families like this, God's going to judge them. Yeah. Yeah. There's a judgment coming. There are people you may know like this. Well, I, I just want a better life for my kids than I have. So therefore, you teach them to abhor the Lord's sacrifice. You teach them to commit fornication in church. And act like a harlot. You think God won't judge that? Yeah. Look, we're, we're to command the least of the commandments here. Amen. And a lot of these old IFB families are no longer recognizable even as Christians. Yeah. Yeah. If they didn't tell you, if they didn't wear it as a badge of honor when it's convenient for them, you wouldn't even know they were saved. Yeah. Well, I had no idea by the way that you live. Look, God's going to judge them. Look what happens here to, to Eli. Look at verse 34. And this shall be a sign unto thee, that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas. In one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest, that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. Flip ahead to Second Kings chapter 20. So what, what was his demise there? It was that he allowed his children to take a higher priority in his life than, his, than obeying God's commandment and teaching God's commandment. And especially in the position of authority that he had. And it's terrible when you see, I, mean, I can't tell you how many times growing up in different states, in different churches, I've seen the pastor's kids were the worst. A lot of times they were the worst. And God forbid that we let that leaven come in. Hey, that's one of my biggest fears. I don't want my children to grow up and think that they're special. That, hey, they need to be trained to, as the next generation coming up that it's their responsibility to preserve their following generation. They need to have the fear of the Lord. Look, then you can die in peace. Then you can have a happy life. God will take care of the rest of the details. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's what everybody omits. Well, I, I was seeking my own fun. My own, I, I, I just want the right life, the right job. And look, how did, how did Eli die? You guys know? Did he die in a, a prosperous old age? A pleasant death? Right? What happened? God's prophecy came true and it said that he fell off the seat backwards off the side of the gate. Now the gate's pretty high. He watched all this happen. The news comes in. Your sons are dead. Oh, the ark has been stolen. And he falls off the gate all the way down. And it says, and his neck break and he died. For he was an old man and heavy. Here's your fat old IFB. They're dying on the vine. And they're going to sell the building to the Pentecostals when he's dead. Right? That's what's happening in America. And you know, I like meeting in a strip mall. I like, the, I like these old rustic buildings. I like an industrial space more than some steeple. Well, Pastor Mayor, are we ever going to get comfortable chairs? Hey, <laughs> quit worrying about your chair and start worrying about souls. Start worrying about other cities. Where else can we start? Hey, you know, I was thinking we should get chairs, but instead I just hey, what can we do in another city? Come on, Pastor Mayor. <laughs> Look, if you allow fornication in your house, if you let your children live in open fornication, God ought to break your neck. Yeah. That's what he did to, to Eli, and he deserved it. Come on. But look, thank God Pastor Romero is not in retirement mode. Thank God he's not just falling asleep. Well, you know, I'm in retirement mode. Everything's good. That's the old IFB. 
He says, hey, there are cities full of the old IFB. Let's go get them. Yep. That fight is for us. We're on the attack. So you're in 2 Second, Second Kings 20. We're going to look at Hezekiah here. He shows off all of his wealth to his friends. right? He gets this, this healing miracle, and then he starts bragging to his friends how great he is. Look at verse number 16. 2 Kings 20, verse number 16. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. Look at verse 18. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? What a weak heart. That's the old IFB. Well, it doesn't matter if my children grow up to never go to church and serve the devil. As long as I get the big building now and I can retire happy now. Is it, is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? But you know what? Selfish leaders destroy their followers. They can't help it. They're in self-destruct mode. You know, his, his sin, the man of God comes to him, your sin will destroy your kingdom and your house. Everything will be demolished. It will enslave your sons. They're going to castrate them and make them slaves. Well, I get, so you're saying it's not until out. Oh, okay, great. So I'm going to prosper? Is that what you said? Imagine, it's like they only hear what they want to hear. Selective hearing. That's exactly what it had. Yeah, that sounds real good. It won't be in my days. That's all he heard. That's all he cared about. His heart was wrong. It was wicked. Go to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Let's not copy the methods that caused failure in the old IFB. Amen. Hey, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. Yeah. Are you ready, Pastor? Hey, I got, I got an idea. I need your help. How many of you we would say yes versus how many would say, well, I don't know. What is it? <laughs> Well, did I just need your help. Well, I don't know. I mean, come on. Get, give me all the details right now. I need to make sure everything's going to fall in place. Forget about it. I'll get somebody else. Look, he ought to. Look, God's doing something in America right now. And I'm thankful to be able to take part in it. Yeah. It's very humbling to see miracles working. To see families spared from death. To see, to see lives saved. To see souls saved. To see families turn around. To have children come up and tell you, Wow, that sermon, I really learned something. You paying attention? Yeah. Look, you guys need to remind Pastor Romero every now and then that you're learning something from him. You need to remind him. You need to support him. You need to encourage him. And it's not just him. You guys need to encourage each other. We're in this battle together. We are in a battle. This is a spiritual fight. Amen. That's what God has tasked us with. Now that you're saved, don't worry so much about your retirement. Let's worry about your, your rewards in heaven. So... We're in a spiritual battle. How do we fight? How do we fight this battle? The Bible has given us very clear instructions. Look, we have order. We have tactics given by the Word of God. right? He has set in order pastors and teachers and helpers. He's got people that He brings together. And look, if you're not sure, if you're saying, I don't see where I can even help in this church right now, read 1 Corinthians 12. Read Romans 12. It talks about the gifts and, and the ministrations, and ministrations in churches, and we're, we're, we're commanded to covet the better gifts. You're supposed to desire more spiritual gifts from God. You're supposed to ask for them. You're supposed to use what you have. I would encourage you, read those chapters and find your gift. Find your purpose in life by reading Romans 12 or 1 Corinthians 12. And for the sake of time, we won't look at it now, but look it up. God gave that to you for a reason. And I want you to think about, so, so how do we fight this battle? When Jesus sent the 70, did he send them all, okay, get in lockstep and go down to that synagogue and you tell them, Ju no, he didn't do it like that, did he? No, he broke them up into small groups. He sent them two by two. He didn't send them to overthrow the established religion. They did not march rank and file. Hey, what? okay, we're going to Oklahoma City as steadfast. Let's all get together, get in your car right now. We're all going to march down there to the biggest Baptist church and we're going to demand that they stop preaching and repenting your sins. That they give up the lordship heresy. That they stop worshiping the Jews and the Zionism. We're going to teach them. We're just all going to get together as a group and we're going to go get them. 
It's not how God works. It's not what he's commanded us to do. He's given us other methods. Look, a very few of us can attack a very lot if we do it God's way. God has given us the power, literally to chase thousands. And I want you to, you know, as I was thinking about this sermon, I'm thinking about how we operate as a church. This, this phrase kept coming back to my mind, so I, I had to look it up. I Googled it. Guerrilla warfare. Right? Who knows about guerrilla warfare? Yeah, most of you. Let me read you a Wikipedia definition of guerrilla warfare. The word is Spanish. It's dealing with how they organize small groups against big. Guerrilla warfare is a form of irregular warfare in which a small group of combatants, such as paramilitary personnel, armed citizens, or irregulars, use military tactics including ambushes, sabotage, raids, petty warfare, hit-and-run tactics, and mobility to fight a larger and less mobile traditional military. Now, this is very interesting to me because, you know, we're not, doing it, we're not sending out buses like the old IFB. We're not mailing a, thousand, you know, a million flyers to Fort Worth like the old IFB. We're sending them out two by two. We're having little soul winning marathons. It's guerrilla evangelism. <laughs> now, now, consider this. Guerrilla evangelism. This is my spin. This is my take. Is a form of new IFB preaching in which small groups of saints, such as average churchgoers, disciples, new believers, and lay people, use evangelism tactics including gospel preaching, daily soul winning, YouTube videos, small town soul winning, and mega marathons to fight a larger and less mobile traditional unsaved religious populace. <laughs> Will you take part? And some guerrilla evangelism with me? Yeah. You mean what do you mean? Like, you mean like preach at the gas station? What if they think I'm weird? What if they go to hell? Yeah. At the grocery store? They don't know me. Yeah, but they can know God. Yeah. What if they go to hell? If you have the time, I can't tell you how many people have a dead life or they're waiting for their show to come on at eight o'clock. They're meandering through the grocery store. And what do you do? Hey, do you watch YouTube? YouTube? Well, yeah, of course. Check this out. More important than that, you go to church. Use it as an opportunity to start talking. They're not going to get offended if you ask them about YouTube. They won't get offended if you ask them about church. And if they say no, say, cool, that's not the one God wanted me to talk to. Yeah. Let me keep looking. We need to find ways, everyday soul winning ways, to just grow spiritually. Hey, maybe God's ready for another. Maybe God's ready for some more fruit. Maybe God wants us to be willing to support more spiritual fruit. In 1 Corinthians 16, he says, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achai that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Look, this is the first fruits of steadfast. I'm looking at it. And you guys have addicted yourselves to the ministering, taking care of the saints. In Jacksonville, in Oklahoma City, hey, fill in the blank. Look, if you say, hey, man, I know where there's... 20 new IFB people just waiting for a church. Why don't you open your mouth and tell Pastor Romero? You say, I know that there's already people that meet, they're having Bible studies, they go out sowing in, they just need some help. Look, God's already decided that this fruit is going to reproduce. This tree is healthy. The fruit is good. Salvation is free. Let's go give it away. Let's go help some cities. Let's go help some people. But look, we have to maintain the foundation here. Let's get some fruit that remains forever. Are you one of these? Will you be one of these? Will your children be one of these? You have the possibility. Look, you're in Genesis 14. We're almost done here. Genesis chapter 14. This is very interesting. This is historically speaking the very first incident of guerrilla warfare. In Genesis 14, look at verse number 14. And when Abraham, when I'm sorry, Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Now look, you're being trained in God's house right here. You're being trained up and ready for battle in this house. Amen. Well, yeah, but I'm just a silent partner. That's okay. Pay attention. That's okay. Turn to the verses. Mark your Bible up. Get ready. It doesn't take long. You're without excuse. If you're really saved, you have the Holy Spirit in you. He will lead you and guide you. He will give you the confidence to go out and talk to others. Right. Yeah. We're being trained up in this house to go out to other areas. Look at verse 15. And he divided himself against them 
And he and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hova, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and all his goods and the women also and the people. Go to Acts chapter 6. We're almost done. Acts chapter 6. So they divided them up. Now again, when we go soul winning, Saturday morning, 20 people show up to go soul winning. Okay, we're all going to work as one group. We're going to go from one door to another door. All 20 of us. No, that's not how God does it. He sends us out in little groups. He sends us out and trains us up as individuals. If you came to this church as a silent partner and you've been here for a while, you probably now are a, you know, a single man band, a one woman band. You can preach the gospel to anybody, anywhere. You have the ability. Hey, you have the tools and the resources, the knowledge. Go do it. You're in the fight. Don't wait and see. Well, let's see when the, the enemy lines are drawn. The enemy lines are drawn everywhere. Right? The thing about guerrilla evangelism is the devil doesn't see it coming. Yeah. The devil says, well, I propped up my big church over here, and I see what you guys have going on over there. Whoa, where'd that go? We just lost one. He got somebody saved at the gas station. Whoa, what just happened? Mom got somebody saved at the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. The devil doesn't see it coming. He can't stop us. He cannot contain what God is doing. And it's a blessing to be used of God. God has a plan. Hey, are you a guerrilla evangelist? The devil can't stop you, but we need more warriors. What are your goals for this life? What are your goals for this life? You've only got a little bit of time. If your goals deal with job title, bank account numbers, house, car, you failed. Look, we need to take care. We need to provide for our own. Don't get me wrong. Increase your skills, man. Take care of ladies. Learn how to do the house and take care of children and raise them up and train them those things also. But while time is short on this earth, are you investing time in things that remain forever? Are you bringing your neighbors with you? Are they saved? Are you bringing your family with you? Are they Christians? You have that power. God has given you the power to forgive sins. He's already paid for it. All you have to do is show them and let them hear it so they can choose to believe. That power is up to you. Now look, in Acts chapter 6, I want you to see this. Verse number 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied... There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. And the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them, and he said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So what's the solution? Verse, th verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Listen. Pastor Romero takes soul winning and church planting very seriously as a business. This is God's business. Are you ready for four more? Are you, I mean, think about it. He's called these men out. He's going to use them for a reason. Go to Psalm 78 and we'll be done. Psalm 78. He used Stephen. Stephen was one of the seven in this group. It says he was a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. It says, the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multitude, multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. They were taking people out of the synagogues. They were taking people out of the false religions. Disciples were increasing. And you know the history of Jerusalem, what happened? God started saying, okay, good. Now, I'm glad the church is growing. It's time for you all to go. It's time for you all to go somewhere else. It's time for some of these people to relocate and start another church. Look, God's doing the same thing here. Yeah. I'm thankful to be part of Steadfast Baptist Church. I'm thankful for the vision that it has. <coughs> Put your name in the blank. Do you want to be one of these? Do you want to be used of God? Do you want it to be said of God that you can rule and reign over multiple cities? You know, an encouraging word. In Malachi 3 he says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often to one another. Here, let, me, let me bring this full speed. Let me bring this to 2018 technology. Okay? Then they that feared the Lord texted each other every day. <laughs> Facebook messengered everybody, everybody every day. Look, the people in the church need to encourage each other. There are some people in here that you probably don't even talk to every service, every week, let alone throughout the week. 
Look, and I know, look, we all run different schedules, and if everybody in here texts me tomorrow, I'm not going to be able to answer half of y'all. I understand, you know. But look, we need to text each other. We need to encourage each other. And God says, listen, he said, They that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for they that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. We need to do that to encourage each other. God will look at us and say, look, they're getting stronger and closer, and there are people that still text me from here. And I, I've been getting texts the whole time I've been here, and thank God. I've been getting texts from people I don't even know yet in Oklahoma City. Man, this is exciting. God's doing something here. Look, we're going to finish with Psalm 78. Go to the end of the chapter at verse 65. Then the Lord awakened as one out of sleep, and a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine. Look, God's word is going around the globe. It's like he's shouting. Hey, salvation is free. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. He's Amen. shouting, it says. Look at verse 66. And he smote the enemies in their hinder parts. And he put them to a perpetual repose. He whipped their butt. He says he smote them in their hinder parts. <laughs> when God rises to do something, nobody can stop him. Amen. Nobody can hold it back. Look at verse 69. And he built his sanctuary like the high palaces, like the earth which he had established forever. He is building his new IFB churches in every city that he sees fit. God is up to something. Are you willing to take part? God needs people to support this church and be willing to go somewhere else. Are you raising your children with that in mind? Hey, one day maybe you'll go somewhere and start a church. Have you committed in your heart? Well, I mean, my family's here. My job is here. My future Is your future here? Do you know that? Look, people move all the time. Would you move for God? Well, but I'm here. and th Hey, that's what I thought. Jacksonville. What? God has provided for everything, and thank God I didn't doubt. Thank God, well, I need all the technical details here, Pastor. I don't know if I'm, I mean, give me the names of the people. Let me find, no, I just, yeah, okay. An opportunity? God wants to start a church? I'll go. Use me. Put me to work. Put me in the fight. I'm ready for this. We are on the attack. We don't have to defend. We need to be on the offensive. Look at verse 72. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. He fed them. God has integrity. He took care of the bills. He took care of the details. He took care of the city ordinances that got in the way. God has had victory over it all. And I don't care what city he sends us to next, he will have victory there as well. Amen. God is doing something. Look at verse 4 where we started. We will not hide them from their children Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. Let's tell the generation to come, whether it be your very children or the people in other cities, God will regenerate in another city and let's tell them how strong God is. Let's tell them how glorious God is. Let's tell them that God will take care of all the details. Will you be part of this battle? Let's pray. Lord God, thank You for Your Word. Lord, thank you for the things that we can learn. Lord, thank you for Steadfast Baptist Church. Lord, thank you for the miracles I've eyewitnessed over the past year. Lord, I just pray that you would continue to have fruit come out of Steadfast. Lord, help this tree to stay healthy. Help the saints that are here to encourage each other and encourage the pastor. Lord, I, I pray you would bless us with many more opportunities. Lord, we will take it. We love you and we thank you. And I just pray that you would keep us safe as we leave from here. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.